Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in last week's video, we talked about how to set up a training program for beginners. So how many days you want to train per week, what movements to include in your training and how many sets and reps to do. And so today we're going to be looking at three strategies that you can use to progress your training over the weeks and months of your training program. And at the end, we'll also look at some different considerations that you want to take into account. Now, you might be wondering, why is it necessary for me to make any changes to my training if I've set up my program in an intelligent way? And that is because of the principle of progressive overload, which states that in order to keep getting bigger and stronger, you need to gradually increase the training stress that you're using. So let's look at progressive overload a little bit closer. If we want our muscles to increase in size and strength, then we need to make sure that we are providing enough training stress for that to occur. So that means you need to lift weights that are heavy enough, and you need to provide enough of that type of stress during the week for it to be effective. So in other words, you need to do enough volume or sets per week. If you lift heavy enough and often enough during the week with enough effort, then that will provide an overload, which will then make sure that your body will adapt by increasing the ability to contract and recruit muscle fibers and by also increasing the size of the muscle. So as an example, if you're new to lifting and you do three sets of eight reps with 20 kilos of a given exercise, then that might be enough to create an overload at first. However, if you're still doing the same workout after a couple of months with the same weights, the same reps, and the same number of sets, then your body will have adapted to that stress and you will no longer be providing an overload. And this is where the progressive part of progressive overload comes into play. So you need to find a way to make sure that you're increasing the training stimulus if you want to make further strength and size gains. Now, there are a couple of strategies that you can use. The first is to increase the weight that you're using, which is a strategy that is great for bother compound exercises and if you're a beginner. Basically, you would start with a weight that allows you to get to your rep target with a little bit left in the tank to make sure that your form is correct. And then you would add two and a half kilos each workout or each week. For instance, if you started out doing three sets of eight on the bother back squat, with 50 kilos, then the next week you would do three sets of eight with 52 and a half kilos. The week after that, you would increase to 55 kilos and so on and so forth. Now, obviously this is not going to be possible forever and eventually your progress will slow down. So once you can't add weight every single week, what you can do instead is use the same weight for two consecutive workouts and focus on it feeling easier the next session before increasing the weight. So if you did 100 kilos for three sets of eight, in one week then you would keep the same weight for the second week and if it feels a little bit easier then you could add two and a half kilos the next week and if you fail to achieve your rep target for two consecutive workouts then it might be that you've built up so much fatigue from all the training that you need to reduce your training stress for a week which is called a deload an easy way to deload would be just to reduce the training load that you're using by about 10 percent so let's say you're using 100 kilos you would use 90 kilos the next week and do the same amount of sets and the same amount of reps just to give your body a little bit of a break and then the next week you would again go to 100 kilos and you would probably be able to do three sets of eight and then start progressing again and if you're still stalling on multiple exercises even after deloading then you might want to have a look at if there are any factors outside of the gym that are holding you back so are you sleeping eight hours a night are you eating sufficient amounts of protein and calories is your overall life stress not overly high? And if you are ticking all of these boxes, then it might be time to move on to another progression strategy, like for instance, adding reps instead of adding weight. So for example, you might choose a rep range of eight to 12, and then pick a challenging weight that you can do for three sets of eight reps without going to failure on the last set. Each week, you would try to add reps until you're able to get three sets of 12. So you might start out with three sets of eight, then it might be nine nine eight the next week maybe ten nine nine the week after that and so on and so forth until you're able to complete all three sets with 12 repetitions and then once you're able to do three sets of 12 you would increase the weight and start out with three sets of eight again i'd avoid hitting failure until the last set otherwise you'll be so fatigued that it will negatively impact your performance on the next couple of sets and if you can't add reps for two weeks in a row then you might want to take a deload week before starting the process again. This is not just a great strategy for bulb compound exercises once you can't add weight every single week, but it's also great for isolation exercises. For instance, if you're doing a bulb bicep curl or a dumbbell side raise. Because for example, when you do something like a squat, you can relatively quickly use heavy weights. So going from 100 kilos to 102 and a half kilos isn't that big of a jump. 
but if you're using 10 kilos on your lateral raises and the next dumbbells weigh 12 and a half kilos then that's a 25 percent jump in weight which is pretty substantial and then you might want to have a broader rep range on isolation exercises so instead of doing 8 to 12 reps you would maybe use 8 to 15 instead lastly you can also add sets to increase the training stress that you're providing this might be necessary after a while as the same volume will produce less and less gains the more experienced you become and larger volumes do tend to correlate well, especially with muscle growth. But I also think it should always be the last thing that you want to increase because there could be a bunch of other reasons why you're not progressing. So oftentimes, especially with beginners, it might be a technique issue or you aren't performing the volume that you're currently doing with enough effort. And then again, it could also be due to lack of sleep, insufficient nutrition, or just overall high life stress. So these are definitely things that I would address first. But if your training setup is good, you feel pretty recovered, and your lifestyle isn't the limiting factor, you've still plateaued on a particular muscle group, then I'd advise you to increase your volume by one or two sets for that muscle group or movement, which for most people will be about a 10 or 15% increase in volume. So there are a couple of other things that you want to consider. First, don't be greedy and don't make jumps that are too big or that you aren't ready for yet. Basically, don't go from squatting the bar one week to squatting 60 kilos the week after. You don't get bonus points for performing more weight or more reps. Your only goal should be to create an overload stimulus, which you'll get by performing enough volume with a high enough amount of effort and keeping the quality and the technique of every set high. Next, and related to that point, is that you don't want to sacrifice your technique for doing more weight or more reps. Focus on performing each rep through an appropriate range of motion, so making sure the targeted muscle gets stretched and contracted, and make sure you control the descent. If your technique suffers and you start shortening the range of motion, just so they can add weight or reps, you will actually provide a weaker stimulus to your muscles and potentially might even increase the risk of injury. And then lastly, we want to consider that no one can get bigger and stronger forever. And the closer you are to your genetic ceiling, the slower progress will occur. So you'll need to be more patient and use more advanced strategies, which I'll cover in another video. But for most people, I'd say you can make great progress just using these three strategies of adding weights, adding reps or adding sets while having your training set up in an intelligent way. And if you don't know how to do that, just watch my last video where I explain in great detail how to create your own training program. So that's it for this one. Let me know in the comments if you have any other training related questions that you would like to have addressed. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.